Hi folks, Puffin here. I just had the magical experience of making videos about the Gospel of Judas because I didn't think there were enough good ones on YouTube. And then, after re-watching one, finding out about Simcha, Simca, Jacob, Jacobo, Jacobovich, I think. Simca Jacobovich and his work, because he's a filmmaker, Canadian Israeli filmmaker, and his work on lots of different stuff, including his comment in, uh, in one of the videos that the Pashtun Afghan people um, are one of the lost tribes of Israel. Now, my other videos are about that, but it did bring up Afghanistan, which has been in the news a lot lately since the American withdrawal there and the Taliban taking over what is now, I think, two-thirds of the country, um, or another regional capital that the Taliban have taken over. And it is now August 13th, 2021. That video I was watching was from five years ago. So the idea has been out there. People have known that the Afghan Pashtun people are possibly one of the lost tribes of Israel, or are the, one of the lost tribes of Israel. And as he suggests, that might change the way people relate to each other. And to take a step back from the cultural significance of it, because I don't, I'm not uh, Jewish myself, I don't understand all that, um, that history, but just the basic idea of looking at people as family instead of enemies and saying, hey, this is lost family. These, you know, everybody on the world is, is somehow a family of ours, not an enemy of ours. And it's a different way of treating things. The big message I have for Afghanistan is, hey, war doesn't work. You know, this whole plan that America's had of taking over a country and then nation building, meaning leaving a lot of weapons there, um, you know, it's, yeah, it's great for the bill for the weapons manufacturers, which is what America seems to be serving in this case, evil, but it's not good for the people. I mean, we did that in Iraq and just ended up leaving a bunch of weapons for ISIS to take, just to arm a terrorist organization by putting a bunch of weapons there that they took over. I don't know how similar we've done the same thing in Afghanistan. It seems like it is fairly similar if we've tried to arm this, you know, government that we propped up and the Taliban that has somewhat resonance with the people. Um, the Taliban has always been portrayed and probably is really terrible and oppressive to people, uh, especially women, for instance. If we know of these crimes that they've done against women, maybe instead of trying to destroy them to get them to stop doing that way, it would be better to engage them in some way to convince them to stop doing crimes against women. Now, one way of engaging them to stop doing crimes against women is to set a better example ourselves. We could, in America, pass the Equal Pay Act for women. We could actually live up to ideals of, you know, that we had, you know, good people in America have had these ideals forever, for generations, since our beginnings. Um, and bad people have stopped them. So we just need to get back to good stuff. Like, I was happy to see an uh, article in the news today that judges are you know, some judges are holding Trump's erectionists accountable and being the conscious of the nation. Well, why did that take until August 13th to have an example of a judge doing that? Well, maybe because some of the judges that saw the cases earlier were more, more lenient, you know, wanted to go ahead and get it out of the way and try to set that example. And now that some real judges are acting, treating it seriously, we're getting some, you know, some real consequences and sentences. I'm not really actually a fan of jail or war or anything. I think we can cut all these things out. And it's based on treating people like real people, like family. That is apparently a secret message um, of Judas of Jesus that I would miss even with the secret of Judas that I've been writing about and studying. There's more secrets than that. And so thanks so much to Simka Jacobovich for enlightening to me to some of those things today. And this idea of the Afghan people being the lost tribe of the Jews, in a way, it's like, well, that shouldn't change how anybody treats anybody. But since it does, since people do have favoritism and preference, maybe we should try to find ways to favor people even that we don't generally favor. Find ways to favor the unfavored people and show favor to everyone. We can do this. Now, the main message of Afghanistan is war doesn't work. It doesn't work to do this. Um, it doesn't work anymore anyway. And you can say, well, it's working for the Taliban. The Taliban's doing war now and winning. Only because we set the game that way again. Again, we put all these weapons out there. We set the game board that way. We have a power and an influence, but if we use that power and influence for war, all we'll ever get out of it is war. We'll get war and we'll get response to war. You know, we'll get war back. We don't want any more war. We're done with it. It's obsolete. I think we've shown that it's obsolete and we need to approach it a different way. If we'd approached it a different way and negotiated with the Taliban and got them to be better to the people to begin with, it would have never taken a war. You can just actually coax people into a better thing. And we might all be part of a human family that if we just start recognizing that and respecting and treating each other that way, we'll find better ways to help 
each other because there's all there's things we all need to learn about being better humans to each other and we'll find ways to do that this pandemic the trump virus pandemic has started us on that path of finding how to work together you know i think once usa and china team team up once usa and china team up we've got it we've got the future a green good future for everyone so let's